name is David McLeod. I am the Marketing and Visitor Services Officer at Surgeons Hall Museum in Edinburgh. I've been working here for seven and a half years, initially as a collections volunteer before moving on to become the colleague who takes, cares of all, takes care of all the marketing, of all the social media, of all the digital. Uh, so Surgeons Hall Museum is the museum that's part of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh. The Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh is over 500 years old and was first in its first existence was the incorporated craft guild of the Barber Surgeons of Edinburgh. And the Town Council of Edinburgh granted the Barber Surgeons a seal of cause on the 1st of July of 1505. And this was granted by King James IV of Scotland. King James himself was particularly interested in medical science and in dentistry, and he used to pay his subjects to remove their teeth. It gave the incorporation exclusive rights to practice surgery in Edinburgh, but in exchange for rights there were certain conditions that which included the maintenance of a certain standard. Members of the guilds had to be skilled at surgery, had to have knowledge of anatomy, and had to be literate. If someone who was not a member of the guild was found practicing in Edinburgh, a petition would have been made to the city council and the person could have been fined. The seal of cause recognized the importance of the thorough knowledge of anatomy for surgeons and members are granted the right to have the body of one executed criminal per year for dissection. The Barber Surgeons received a new Royal Charter in 1695 which gave them jurisdiction over Edinburgh and the south east of Scotland. It once again confirmed the incorporation's responsibility for anatomical teaching and prompted them to apply to the Town Council for more bodies for dissection. This was approved on the condition that the incorporation provided an anatomical theatre. Old Surgeons Hall was built and the first public dissection took place there in 1702. The space we're currently standing in is our temporary exhibition space. Prior to the museum's redevelopment, this was home to the Menzies Campbell Dental Collection. The dental collection has since been rehoused in another part of the museum, which you can see if you visit. With the need for a temporary exhibition space, we had never done temporary exhibitions on a scale like this previously. We had never done a regular exhibition programme, so the need for a space was essential. With this space, we were able to reproduce temporary exhibitions on an annual basis. Our first temporary exhibition was associated with Waterloo 200 and ph photography from the time. The second temporary exhibition, the one we're currently standing in, Medicine Men, runs until March. So this temporary exhibition highlights a more unusual aspect of the museum's collection. It tells the stories of a few medical personalities with a connection to the college who travelled the world in search of knowledge and adventure, and what they brought back with them. Bringing together a number of fascinating specimens and objects in the museum's stores with a common theme is the first time that many of these objects have been on display for quite some time, and it gives a new generation the opportunity to learn all about them. One of the key objects in this exhibition is the shrunken heads. They were brought to the college by Dr. Wilburn Her Henry Ferguson, who was an American doctor who spent much of his life traveling to various, various parts of the Amazon rainforest to research potential, potential drugs derived from plants found there. Um, from providing potential cures for cancer in the depths of the, the Amazon, Ferguson shared a, shared a thirst for knowledge that often placed him in extremely challenging and hazardous environments, all in the quest for scientific advancement. In many cases, Ferguson was keen to actively engage with and learn from the local indigenous people as part of his journey. The Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh continues to have a truly international outlook, with more than half of its 23,000 fellows working in over 100 countries worldwide.